Hello and uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Manus Prilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute uh, in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it's my great pleasure um, to have the meeting today called Recross When Two Worlds Meet, which is supported by IMDS. It is my pleasure to introduce the panel. We have two great presenters who are well known to the CTO world due to their expertise, both on the clinical and the research arenas. Dr. Roberto Garbor, who is the Director of Complex Interventions at Maria Pia Hospital in Turin, Italy, and also Director of the upcoming Turin CTO meeting in the next few weeks. So, Roberto, welcome. Thank you, Manos. And Great also, we have Dr. Elliot Smith, who is the Director of Complex Interventions at the Barts Heart Center in London, also an outstanding CTO operator. And this is an opportunity to discuss about a device that uh, uh, is not yet available in the United States, although approval is anticipated soon, but is making already quite an impact on how we approach uh, coronary CTOs. And in many meetings, we have uh, these discussions that we need new technologies, something new to happen, but it's rarely that we have something truly new that we can use in our um, armamentarium. And I think with this device, the Recross, we have something that is not available before that can really change the way we think and perform CTO interventions. So we're going to have two um, presentations based on the device and also some of the experience of the device from um, Dr. Smith first and Dr. Garbo. And then in between, we'll have discussion. Also, please feel free to send any questions you have through the text, and then we'll be happy to address those questions as things go by. So before, um, without further inter uh, delay, we'll have um, uh, Dr. Smith. So Elliot, please go ahead. Thanks very much, Manos, uh, and great to see you and great to see you too, Roberto. Uh, really fantastic to be able to uh, join you here for this seminar, uh, When Two Worlds Meet. And so the, um, the title for my talk will be Experience with the Recross, specifically for anti-grade dissection and re-entry during CTO-PCI. Now, we know there's been a huge amount of innovation in technology in and around the CTO space after the over the last 10 years or so, with evolution of wire technologies, microcatheters, dual lumen microcatheters, and dedicated devices specifically for anti-grade dissection and re-entry. What we're talking about today is a new dual lumen microcatheter that differs from the other, uh, the others that are available, in that it has two over-the-wire ports and two hubs and it has three exit ports. It has two exit ports coming from the tip port and then a side port coming from a second blue exit hub. And if we look at the distal end of the device, what we can see is that you have a distal exit port and then eight millimeters behind that, you have a second exit port that comes from the blue hub. And then there is a secondary exit from the tip hub, which is 12 millimeters behind the tip or four millimeters behind the other exit port, such that you've got three exit ports that are offset. There's 12 millimeters from front to back, and they are offset by 180 degrees, such that you'll be pointing in different directions when you're exiting the catheter through these individual over the wire lumens. And that's gonna be important going forward. This is just a brief video that I'm gonna spin through just to show this is the distal exit pub, uh, port. And here you can see a wire exiting out of the uh, side port. And then you can also see if we just play here, uh, images just not playing at the moment. So I'll just move it through. You can see that there's a stilette in the blue uh, port, which you can use to advance, but then you can advance your wire into the blue exit port. And this will come out of the side of the catheter eight millimeters behind the tip. And so that if you're using both ports simultaneously, you can see that you can have a rail for your distal port and you can be uh, exiting uh, with 360 degree access to different parts of the vessel uh, from these two individual exit ports. So what are dual lumen indications? Well, you will be familiar with the use of dual lumen microcatheters in routine or complex PCI, either getting access to more difficult side branches, protecting side branches, making sure that you're going through uh, the middle of a stent when you're recrossing a stent. Uh, you may also be used to more advanced use, such as uh, retrograde wiring of a difficult side branch uh, using a microcatheter or even using 
uh, a dual lumen microcatheter to deliver contrast so that you can see something in a side branch. Uh, and those can all be done with this device or a common form of dual lumen microcatheter uh, where you simply have a monorail with an over the wire lumen. But today we're talking specifically about CTO indications. Now, when we're approaching CTOs, the role of dual lumen catheters has started to become very important when we're trying to uh, gain access to a difficult proximal cap at a side branch to improve support of a penetrative wire and entry into the CTO body. But of course, you can do that with a standard uh, over the wire um, dual lumen microcatheter with just one over the wire port. Here, what we're going to be talking about is whether this device could be an alternative form of designated device to perform anti-grade dissection and re-entry procedures. So let's talk about the ADR concept. Well, anti-grade dissection re-entry is used because some work cases you can't wire and the normal failure mode for anti-grade wiring uh, is that you find yourself in a subintimal position and some cases have no retrograde options. And hence, over the last 10, 15 years, uh, there have been iterations of anti-grade dissection re-entry where we purposefully dissect around the occlusion. But if we're going to dissect, uh, particularly, for example, using knuckle wires, we have to have a way of getting back into the true lumen distally. When do we use ADR? Well, we use ADR primarily as hybrid operators when there's a clear cap, uh, a longer lesion, which is less likely to wire with standard wire technologies. Uh, when you have a distal landing zone that's free of severe or significant disease and where you're away from a major bifurcation because we don't want to dissect past a large bifurcation branch, we need outflow into all major branches. But of course, ADR is also a secondary approach for failed anti-grade wiring when you find yourself in a subintimal or non-luminal position and can't get back or for bailout when you fail to get retrograde in a case where you thought that retrograde was going to be the right way forward. And so the question here is, can this device be used for an anti-grade dissection re-entry? Well, anti-grade dissection re-entry has traditionally been done device specifically with the Crossboss and Stingray system. The Crossboss is a microcatheter that is uh, progress with rapid spinning to create a small dissection plane, and then it's exchanged out for a separate catheter. This catheter, the Stingray catheter, is an over-the-wire balloon. It has two small balloons at the distal end that help it orientate, and it has one lumen with two offset exit ports proximal to the distal exit port, such that when in this uh, image we're sitting on top of the artery, we have these two exit ports that are very close together, just a few millimeters apart, that allow us to perform hopefully a precise re-entry into the true lumen. But it is difficult to deliver. It's an over-the-wire balloon, not a microcatheter as such. It doesn't have a braided design. And you can see here that we've had to use a guide extension and uh, an associated uh, anchor balloon and RV branch just to deliver the device. Um, so it can be uh, bulky and more difficult to deliver. So, what was my initial experience with Recross specifically as an ADR device? Well, we often come to these newer technologies, not where they might have been designed, but where everything else has failed. So I'm going to show you this case, which is a very high end, complex, quite hostile CTO. It's calcified, it's long, it's got diffuse distal disease at the bifurcation, and there is a bifurcation down at the bottom end of this artery, such that this would not be something that I would normally do with an anti-grade dissection and re-entry procedure. This is normally all day uh, a retrograde case. And here you can see that there may be some potential interventional collaterals. So we've got a non-ambiguous cap. You saw some potential um, Fluoros fluoroscopically some areas in the mid body, that's all calcium. There's no, um, there's no contrast there. The length is greater than 60 millimeters, diffuse bifurcation distal landing zone. There might be interventional collaterals. It's a retrograde case. In all of these cases, we perform anti-grade preparation. Um, this is a knuckle wire being progressed close to uh, the distal cap, but we keep short of the distal cap so that we don't promote hematoma formation. And you can see a guide extension 
has been advanced all the way to uh, the mid to distal right coronary artery. Uh, and then we're ready to set up reverse cart when we go retrograde. But unfortunately, despite all efforts, and I spent about an hour trying to get retrograde here, I was not able to get retrograde either through septals or epicardial collaterals. So we now have a very difficult situation with a diffusely diseased distal landing zone on a bifurcation, and we've got quite a mature large dissection plane. And this wouldn't normally be something where I'd be confident that firstly, I can actually deliver Stingray, and secondly, I'm not sure that I can orientate Stingray in such a way that I can gain re-entry. And this is where I tried the recross catheter. And the recross catheter was able to track very well through this uh, calcific tortuosity over the single lumen uh, through the distal port. And then once we get down to just proximal to that landing zone, I'm then able to exit the microcatheter with a stiff wire. So this was a pilot 200 through the end port, but I'm using a Gaia third wire with a bend on it to try to uh, gain some purchase, gain some separation. So we're using the techniques that we've used with Stingray to try and get separation, which you start to see now pointing away underneath and you suddenly get that pop and release and re-entry. So we're now into the posterior left ventricular branch, but the question is, have we actually made a dissection? Have we got re-entry? Well, we can see that we're here clearly subintimal with hematoma here on IVUS. On an IVUS run here, we are at the bifurcation. We are definitely luminal at the bifurcation, but in fact, although it looks like we are confluent at the bifurcation, this over here, I think, represents some subintimal hematoma as well. And it's not clear whether we're luminal into the side branch. Here, just beyond the bifurcation, we clearly have luminal position with some subintimal hematoma over here. And at the top, you will see that we have uh, full true lumen distally with no compression with subintimal hematoma. So there has been a dissection and there has been a re-entry, if I can try and progress my next slide. What's difficult though, is that you don't get quite the precision as you might have with Stingray because it's hard to see these markers or orientate them uh, directly until you start to get the wire to leave the side port. What you can do, which is very impressive with this device though, is that you can use one lumen to aspirate blood to decompress any subintimal hematoma, and that will optimize your opportunities for improving access to the true lumen. And that's been described with Stingray, but usually has to be done as a separate procedure to aspirate through the end port, because there's only a single lumen. Here you've got two lumens and you can aspirate hematoma. What's really impressive about this device though, is that you can then use it as your crossing microcatheter. Then having exchanged it out, brought it back down and brought it into the posterior left ventricular branch, you can then use an exit port again with a Gaia third this time to sequentially re-enter now into the posterior descending artery. And so what we have is outflow into all major branches with sequential re-entry using the same method microcatheter for all steps. And this certainly interests me um, as something that potentially might enhance our ability to perform ADR. But that's a very high end case. I mean, that's as complex as they come. The question is, might this device be useful as a primary ADR approach and when might that be? So here's a different case. This is a previous fail from another center. And this looks like a much shorter occlusion initially. Uh, you can see that there is an occluded LAD. The cap appears ambiguous, but actually the previous failure mode was that they did get into vessel architecture and caused a dissection, but couldn't find true lumen. And what you actually see is there's a longer occlusion than you think. And the true proximal cap is up here. And this is a small septal circulation down here, I'll show you, which isn't where the cap is. And we confirm that on IVUS. What we could do here was take a normal antegrade microcatheter and try and cross the proximal cap, but it proved very difficult even with a stiff wire and the wire kept prolapsing down the septal. So here we've actually used the side port of the recross catheter with the end port wire down the septal 
to gain access to the proximal cap with a stiff wire, and this one's a Gaia third. And then we've exchanged that out, so we've done a trapping procedure, brought the recross back down on the wire that's now in the CTO body, and then I've changed over to a Gladius wire. And the Gladius is a polymeric wire, which has got some tip load there, is steerable in plaque, but will quite happily traverse subintimally. And what we can see here is that that wire now is just sitting in this view on top of the lumen, but is not luminal. Now, we can advance the microcatheter itself uh, as a normal microcatheter, and then when we're close to the distal landing zone, we can try and achieve re-entry. And you'll note that I have used an anchor balloon in the septal. And what you're seeing here is the gladius wire is the upper wire, and you can see re-entry using the Gaia wire through the blue tip port. So I'm just going to show you that a little bit larger because what we're doing is we're just approaching the distal landing zone from just behind where the wire is sitting above the true lumen. And then using the technique that I would have used with a stingray, where we're aiming to meet some resistance, feel some resistance with a stiff wire, get some separation from that marker of the upper wire, you'll just see it here again, and aim for a pop and release, at which point we are now uh, through into the true lumen, and we can confirm that with a retrograde injection and advance that wire further around. It's clearly luminal. Here the wires look parallel, but we know in the other view they're not. And then we can exchange out the same microcatheter, so we can remove that microcatheter and bring the same microcatheter back down on the white tip port into the lesion, exchange wires and fix the artery. So was that ADR? Let's have a look. We have to run an IVUS and we can see that on IVUS we are luminal at the proximal cap, but here we are clearly subintimal. Here we have a subintimal space, here we have the true lumen underneath. We cross distally into the true lumen proximal to an area of some diffuse calcification and the true lumen distally is preserved. Just beyond the point of re-entry, we can see some subintimal hematoma. Here we're intraplaque, but there's some subintimal some some hematoma from where we re-entered. So are there really two worlds for CTO PCI? Is this anti-grade dissection re-entry or is this parallel wiring? Was that just parallel wiring? Well, it depends what your strategy is. If you accept that your wire, when it was sitting above the true lumen, was in the correct position, and that you are then going to try and re-enter at that point, you will deliver your microcatheter all the way down to that point to try to gain re-entry. If you are a parallel wirer, you may say that you want to go true to true. And so you may have the microcatheter further back within the lesion and trying to redirect within the plaque. Can we really differentiate between those two? What does it really mean true to true? Well, what we've learned from consistent CTO, which is a hybrid CTO registry where we were using crossbar stingray as the majority uh, of cases for antegrade dissection and reentry. Here, we looked at patients, whether they had antegrade or retrograde procedures, we looked at them um, according to whether they had a dissection strategy or whether they had a wiring strategy aiming to go true to true. And what we see is that the final successful strategy does not always have concordance with the anatomical reality. If you're going anti-grade, you will be, uh, if you think you're going true to true, you'll be subintimal 12% of the time. When you're doing it retrogradely, it goes up to a quarter of a time. Meanwhile, often when you think you're dissecting anything between 12 and 17% of the time, you will actually be uh, knuckling through intimal plaque. And so my view is that all successful CTO is true to true. Otherwise, it's a fail. It's just about how you get there. And what we know is the outcome's the same. So dissection and reentry techniques, I think, are a key enabler to facilitate success in CTO PCI. And therefore, we need to make sure that we continue to iterate and evaluate anything that can make us successful when we're trying to do it. 
you can take an alternative view that dissection and re-entry is only a last resort where you can't otherwise achieve it. Uh, and I'll be interested to hear from uh, Roberto in his lecture as to the difference between ADR and parallel wiring with this device. But I think this device is interesting as a potential for dedicated ADR because it does have a significant amount of deliverability and it's got versatility to be used as a workhorse microcatheter and it can be used in a normal dual lumen wafer uh, puncturing the proximal cap. But what you do have is you have to give up a little bit of anchoring, which you get from a balloon sticking within the subintimal space with Stingray and the positional accuracy of the point of re-entry that you get if you can deliver a stingray to the distal landing zone. So that will be an area of interest as we start to evaluate this further. So what do I mean by that? Well, when I've re-entered in that second case and indeed the first, the re-entry point is actually remote from the port. It's not immediately next to the port. And how much you can control that will depend on some wiring skills. Uh, the end port, however, does seem to provide a very good rail and it fixes you in position in the space. And you do have that alternative strategy of 360 degree access to come out of the more proximal white port as well. But I found it difficult and so far, and I'm early in my experience, to work out the orientation of which point is, port is pointing in which direction. I think more work needs to be done from my point of view uh, for my own experience on that. What is clear is it's clearly deliverable you're able to reuse it, it's definitely robust, and it did show us that bifurcation re-entry might even be a thing that's potentially feasible for the future uh, using ADR, because you can bring it down once or twice without expecting the device to struggle. But if you're gonna use anti-grade dissection and re-entry, the same rules apply as per Crossboss and Stingray. You'll note that in the first case, we used a guide extension to control uh, expansion of the subintimal space. We also aspirated the subintimal space, and that's an additional uh, opportunity that this catheter presents. So, where might this device be useful for primary ADR? Well, as a primary approach, you could argue similarly for routine ADR. Uh, a clear cap, yes, but you can deal with a side branch. Longer lesions, yes, and more tortuous lesions. And where perhaps there's more diffuse disease at the distal landing zone and you need to steer uh, on your re-entry and exit. And maybe we can speculate that with more experience, bifurcations wouldn't be absolutely excluded. But I think what it's more interesting as is actually as the secondary approach, because you can use this as your primary microcatheter for an anti-raid wiring case, and if your wire uh, finds itself in a subintimal position, you're immediately set up with the same microcatheter for ADR. And then finally, um, of course, it is available there as a bailout for failed stingray delivery uh, or for failed retrograde procedures. So it's an interesting device and I'm in the early phases of my experience and I really look forward to hearing the comments of the discussion uh, and from hearing from Roberto's experience. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Elliot. That was an amazing overview of uh, the device as well as its initial use. And I must say, I love your um, analogy about crossing the two worlds. As you know, in the meetings, we still have the debates which strategy is best, should we go dissection or should I take through lumen? And you're absolutely right that, uh, you know, sometimes we're debating more than we potentially should. Uh, we do have some, some questions, I think, from people who haven't used necessarily the system. One question is regarding advancement. So as you showed us, my understanding at least is you advance this through the white port because that's the one that has the exit at the tip of the microcatheter. There was one question about can you advance it actually through the blue port? Probably not a good idea, I would think, but just curious on your thoughts on that. No, I view it very much like Stingray. So once you're out of the blue port, uh, really, unless you're in a very large space, which you wouldn't really want to be in anyway, then no, you can't advance it on the blue port. So you would have to exchange it out. Trapping becomes very important, but it is trappable with a dedicated trap in a six French. I always use it pretty much in seven French, I have to say. Um, but yeah, you'd, you'd need to trap it out, bring it back down on the white port. 
um, and then always advance it on the distal exit. Wonderful. And then, uh, uh, you know, I love your, your video about the aspiration, but you can aspirate through either port. If you are down there, then you can use either port, right? Because the unique advantage of the microcatheter, the recross, is that it actually both connect all the way backwards. So if you aspirate through either port, you're going to decompress whatever hematoma is there. Um, quick Absolutely. question, have you used it uh, retrograde ever? Can you deliver it retrograde uh, potentially for uh, uh, through a collateral, a large collateral? Or that's not a good idea. I don't know if you've done it or any experience on that. I've got no experience of it, and I, I thought intuitively it's a bulkier device and it's, it's a stiffer device, so I, I wouldn't use it retrogradely. It could be great through a vein graft conduit um, and maybe through a very, very large uh, collateral, but no, I would say no to retrograde, but I'd be really interested in Roberto because, as I say, I'm at the beginning of my experience with the device. Elisa, I've done by retrograde in a situation like uh, occlusion of the right at the level of the cracks, and I was able to to deliver from a septal retrograde in order to have two wire in the, the distal right, yeah, one in the postural branch, and then to puncture uh, through the, the 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 blue lumen to the to the cracks to the distal right. So it's possible. Is uh, but in this situation, is essential to use the stylet. So you, you need to have a stylet on the blue lumen and uh, you can cross a uh, septal. If you fail, you can you can have a, a previous dilation with a, with a small small profile balloon, like 125 balloon over the septal. And then you can put the recross with a the stylet. Then once you are in the PDA, you remove the stylet and you can use the second port. Perfect. And also, I do love the, you know, your suggestion, um, Elliot, about uh, having it as a primary microcatheter. So essentially, you start with this. It is a little bulkier, as you say, which gives you more support for undergrade wiring. And then if you need to go, um, if you go subminimal, then you can directly do whatever you want to do, re-entry or direct the wire. And I also love your point about the, actually, the, uh, the borders are kind of blurred. What is ADR and what is wiring? I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, the end result is the same. You get the wire through. And looking at your cases, in both cases, your branches were there. And I would say LAD, you don't want to go long dissection points because you lose a lot of diagonals and septals. But looking at your case, everything was there. I mean, it was a very short area of subminimal, if any. So actually, that's the other beauty. You don't necessarily have to go long dissection points, but you can re-enter or redirect the wire very, very early. So that's a great um, way to do it. Um, well, another question that came through is about um, deliverability. Any comments? I know it's uh, um, obviously, as you say, bulkier than the standard microcasters, but uh, compared with Stingray, it's probably more deliverable. Compared with the standard Corsair or a standard microcaster, how would that uh, compare, would you, would you say? Well, in, in my experience, it's uh, it's going to be less, slightly less deliverable than the standard microcatheter, and particularly the lower profile or the Corsair Pro or you know Turnpike uh, Turnpike Spiral Antigradely. It's um, but it's still eminently deliverable, and I think I've only once had to balloon with a small balloon uh, uh, to get it through to a, a, a good landing zone. Um, but you may need to use more than one microcatheter. That's for sure. Sure. And then uh, um, another question that came is about the blue port and the orientation. And I think as you showed on your presentation, if I understand correctly, you don't really know which direction the blue port is facing, right? So essentially it's a trial and error, which to me looks very similar to the double blind stick and swap. You just puncture on both sides with a stiffer wire and see which one works. So I don't know if there's any way to be more certain about it, but I think even with Stingray, we typically don't do many injections right now to find the orientation. It's a chance finding which port faces toward the true lumen. I don't know, Elliot or Roberto, if you have any thoughts on that part. Well, I think what I'd say for ADR is that, is that the one area where it becomes a little bit more tricky is that it's the separation of those ports. So you might have to be in a longer distal landing zone. Or as you saw uh, in my first case, although I was able to re-enter at the bifurcation, the tip actually had to go beyond the bifurcation uh, very slightly, which may propagate a bit of hematoma. So, you know, you do lose a little bit of the specificity of the exact point of re-entry. 
But if we're being open and honest, I think you get that with Stingray as well, don't you? It's not always the case that Stingray punctures exactly at the exit port. Sometimes it just provides a platform and you have to stick and drive and you can't afford to stick and swap because you don't know exactly where you re-entered. It could be a few millimeters away. So here, there's definitely a little bit more wiring that happens, in my view, once you get out of the side port. Uh, and that's going to depend because you've got your eight millimeters from the port to the first exit, which is the blue port, and then you're another four millimeters back from that uh, before you get to the second exit on the white port. But what it's great for is when you're not in a CTO or when you're in a longer opportunity, if you need to, if your orientation isn't right for one port, it will be right for the other port. Perfect. Well, I think it's um, 11, it's um, uh, 630. So I think we should move on to uh, Dr. Garbo's presentation and then we'll have more discussion at the end. For the audience, feel free, please feel free to put any questions you have on the live feed and we'll discuss them live as they come. And uh, Roberto, looking forward to your cases and your suggestions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Manos. Uh, hope you have a, you can see my presentation. So uh, I think that uh, uh, Elliot did a great presentation about uh, the potential of this uh, uh, device. I will talk about uh, my experience uh, about the versatility of uh, Recross. And uh, this is my um, short slide about my the last three years of my uh, uh, my cases. You can see, and uh, uh, from 2019 up to today, and uh, uh, I changed uh, a little bit my my strategy in the last two years, as you can see, and I have a sort of uh, an increase of integral success from uh, 53 to 65 percent of all cases and uh, an increase of ADR success. So part of Antigrade ADR, uh, this year I increased a lot of uh, uh, the, my, my number of ADR cases and uh, uh, my uh, number of recross uh, from uh, seven to 25% uh, overall. So uh, mentioned that uh, I started use the recross in May, 2019. So when, uh, uh, when it was available in Europe and uh, in, this year, I uh, have more uh, the, ch the chance to use more uh, this kind of uh, uh, great device for me. So I will uh, show you a couple of cases. I will start with the uh, case of uh, integrated wire escalation, and was a case that uh, I performed during live in November for uh, uh, CTO Essential, and was was performed by in uh, in Turin was a, a CTO of. Uh, uh, Proximal LED, you will see now that uh, was a fail uh, previous by another operator, and uh, uh, we have a sort of a diffuse disease of the of the LED from the right. Uh, this is the previous attempt. I start directly with the, with recross microcatheter, and uh, uh, in order to evaluate the feasibility in crossing uh, at the beginning with a single microcatheter, or to evaluate uh, the bifurcation. So I start from the, the white port, as uh, uh, Elliot explained, and uh, this is the Judo 3 and the, the, the recross. And then I, have, I was with seven French, I have an IVUS evaluation. You can see here uh, the, perf the puncture was perfect and the, the recross is, uh, um, is compatible with seven French and IVUS. Then this is the Judo 6. So I change with Judo 6 and you can see the behavior of the wire in, uh, uh, in crossing the lesion, this is the retrograde evaluation of the distality. I have some uh, uh, problem to, to go in the good uh, direction with the Judo 6, and then I try again from the same position uh, with much better position of the wire. And you can see the good behavior of Judo 6 and the uh, uh, injection from the right and then after evaluation uh, with the with multiple injection i was sure to be in the in the true lumen and then i advanced the recross you can see what we discussed before about the the profile of the device this is uh, advancing you can see uh, my hands uh, on the screen at uh, the advancing very interesting advising of the device without uh, uh, too much force followed the judo and then uh, uh, i was able to 
to use the to remove the stylet. This is with the stylet, the advancement with the stylet. Then I remove the stylet from the blue lumen. And this situation, you can leave the Judo 6 and take a Sion wire in the in the side port and go into the stality of the LED. So we have Judo 6 in the white port and then the Sion. You can see the Sion on the on the blue port, how easily went in the LED. So this was a uh, single uh, lumen uh, uh, use of recross. This is the final result of the stenting, and uh, uh, was a really interesting behavior during during the light. Then this is another case of uh, uh, proximal and distal bifurcation. This is always seven French guiding cutter amplats left, uh, and uh, I start with the recross uh, as a single micro catheter. With Friedrich's TA, this is a real time fluoroscopy storage of, uh, of my uh, crossing with Friedrich's TA that went in the side branch, in the small side branch of the right. The advancement of recross was also quite easy. Okay, this is the filter XTI in the side branch, and then I was able to advance the recross. This, this is the confirmation. And then I need to anchor my right. So anchoring balloon and the recross together with the seven French, and then uh, a second uh, CTO wire, also in this case, was the Judo, Judo 3 from the blue lumen. So you can understand that which this device you can use in the simultaneously two CTO wire in order to uh, to cross a CTO when you have a bifurcation at the distal cap. So this is the, uh, the crossing with the Judo at the level of the distal right. You can see here. And then the confirmation, the ad advancement, advancement of recross over, I change the, the recross I put on the, on the white tip, the judo, and I was able to advance the recross uh, over the judo three up to the distal right. And then this was the final, final shot in this, in this right. So this is another situation of uh, uh, use of parallel wire technique was a case of uh, last last year proximal right occlusion recross and Gaia second that was subintimal clearly at this point I start to have a parallel wire technique so recross I take a Gaia third so the second wire must be stiffer than the than the first one you can see on the left, the the Gaia second, and then the Gaia three in the, the Gaia third in the in the true lumen, and then uh, I succeed opening this uh, short occlusion of the right. This is another uh, case that I perform uh, um, one month ago it was a, a distal LED with calcified lesion, huge calcification and uh, bifurcation uh, occlusion. I was for the entry point. It was uh, uh, helpful to understand which is, was the, the site of the puncture. Recross and Gaia second. You can see that the Gaia second uh, is subintimal. It's completely outside of, uh, of the lumen of the, my, my distal LED diffusely disease. At this point, I try to use the recross as a, a dual lumen, dual OTW for parallel wire technique. So we have Gaia second, and this is the Gaia third. From the blue, I remove the stylet. I, I use the Gaia third from the blue lumen, 
but I fail again. So in this situation, I have two options. Try to go with ADR, so pushing, knuckling my my wire, my and then knuckling the microcatheter. And but the other option was try to have a, a sort of a, a different parallel wire with the, another wire. So I take the Ornet 14, but the 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 concept that I, I used from the white port, I start from the tip. So you have many options. You can use. Uh, two wire from the, 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 the white port from the, the side or the tip and one wire from the, uh, the blue side port. So you have many options. In this situation, I start with the Onet 14 from the tip and I was able to, to gain the true lumen. So uh, you can see on the left the advancement of Onet 14 and on the right the confirmation from the right corner yard that uh, I succeed entering the true lumen from the, the Ornet 14. Then this was the advancement of recross over the Ornet quite easily. And this was the final result from the uh, two different uh, view. So I think I like this case because uh, I had the possibility to use the recross for as a single and the parallel wire strategy in uh, two different way. So this is really the, the importance and the versatility of this device that you can change during your procedure. You have many, many options. Then uh, some case of integrated dissection re-enter like uh, a case that uh, show uh, fantastic case by by Elliot. This was the I like to show because it's the uh, the case of two years ago. I think it's the first case in the world of uh, uh, ADR with recross was performed. To the second of May in the 2019 was uh, this uh, this calcified occlusion of the LAD with uh, uh, some collateral from the right and the septal to septal collateral from the left. I try with the classical at the beginning with the class as a classical dual lumen with uh, uh, with Gaia second from the the side port Gaia third from the side port and then I switch with the uh, from the tip so I switch uh, I try to use as a single lumen microcatheter with Gaia third I fail I am subintimal. You can see, and they failed to advance the recross because of the calcification at the proxima cap. So I failed to dilate also with the Kazuki 1.0. I switched to a blimp that's uh, easily advanced into the and dilate the proximal cap, but uh, also my wire advance and make a, an increase of a subintimal dissection. You can see the wire is advancing distally. After that, that dilatation, I was able to advance the recross. This is a fluoroscopy evaluation of the advancement of recross. And then this is the injection from the caravel from the septal. And the, the position of recross is clearly subintimal. And I think is the ideal position of ADR. So what uh, uh, we discussed with Elliot, which is the difference between parallel wire technique and ADR. For me, the, the difference is the position of the microcatheter. So if your microcatheter is uh, uh, in the middle of the occlusion, uh, you can talk about parallel wire technique. If your, uh, your device is uh, distal to the distal cap in the uh, position which your vessel is uh, is, is open, it's not, uh, is not occluded, but is open. You have your device subintimal, and you can talk about subintimal uh, ADR. Also, if, uh, as Elliot show in many cases, uh, also a single uh, step up uh, wire escalation have some uh, part of subintimal tracking. So this was the, the ADR, and uh, uh, from the uh, blue stylet lumen, the side port, I start with Gaia third, and I failed. So this is a classical failure of ADR from the from the blue lumen. You can see two different uh, view. 
and then I take the ONET 14 from the proximal exit port, so from the white uh, lumen that, uh, as Elliot explained, is uh, have two exit ports, one from the tip and one is a side port proximal, four millimeter proximal than the blue. This is the ONET 14. Crossing is, uh, if I am able to show you. This is the crossing, the movement of an ONET 14 going in the true lumen from the white port. The confirmation. Then I change the position. I went to the into the tip, I advanced the recross. And this was the final result. I don't have the IVOS image, but I perform IVOS. I have really a very small subintimal track in this in this artery. This is a very recent case of uh, less than one month ago. It's a proximal CACTO with ambiguous proximal cap, and you can see the, the retrograde option are really poor because the the, the LED is uh, really diffusely diseased. So is a really uh, was a, a surprise we, we don't think to uh, to have this kind of uh, evolution of disease in the led so i uh, refused the option of retrograde and I have only the anterograde option and i perform ibus uh, to have an ibus guided puncture and uh, uh, i start with a fine cross uh, with gaia third and then on at 14 you can see here the uh, the gaia third and the ornet it was completely subintimal with these two wire and then I switch. I try to knuckle with the fielder XT, but I fail because uh, of the proximal cap classification. Then I need to switch from knuckling with the gladius. You can see here on the left, this is a fine cross and knuckling with the gladius. And then this uh, is the, the time for recross. You can see on the right, the advancement of recross that uh, easily advance in the, in the subintima space. And after that, I start to make the, the re-entry. This is the Conquest uh, Pro 12. I start with, on, I fail with the Ornet 14. And uh, uh, I, I try to, to re-enter with the Conquest. This is the Conquest Pro 12 uh, re-entry. The real time on the, on the left, on the yes, and the injection from the right. And then I was able to advance the, the recross, and then it puts a uh, Sion blue uh, in the PDA over the blue lumen. This is the time of of Sion blue easily in the PDA, and very good result. Also, the IVUS uh, show uh, the the reentry of the of the CP12 was uh, proximal to the acute uh, marginal uh, level of the right. So at the, the distal part of the of the mid right and then the last case i want to show you is the case uh, re also a recent case of last month was the osteal circ with some collateral from the right and i start retrograde but you can see in this case i fail in uh, i try to 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 cross this epicardial i failed in both epicardial, so I start to use the to puncture with the IVUS guidance uh, our the the ostial on the circ. You can see here with the IVUS and recross. I start to I uh, went I fail with the Gaia third as a single lumen, a single wire uh, puncture, and then I switch uh, advance the recross over the Gaia, and I try to have a parallel wire technique that I failed, I will show you. This is the parallel wire with ONET 14. Failure. And then I knuckle with the Gladius. This is the knuckle with the recross. And then the ADR with ONET 14.
with the advancement of uh, the switch to a soft uh, serial wire that went in both branches of the circ, you can see here, and then the distal part of the circ with the with the the soft polymeric the soft wire, and then this was the final uh, result uh, of the circ after after stenting. So uh, uh, I want to conclude my my presentation with the take home message that are that uh, uh, advanced antigate technique are essential to increase the success rate and to reduce the complication in the modern approach to CTO complexity. And the recross is the most innovative device that uh, I think we can have in, the, in, this, uh, in this period. The small profile, six French compatible for anchoring and trapping, seven French with IBUS. The versatility of the microcatheter that make possible all the integrated advanced technique from single wire escalation to integrated dual access and ADR with two wire. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much uh, again, Roberto. That was a phenomenal overview. And actually, your your final slide, your take home slide, actually answers one of the questions that came up about trapping the device. And as you mentioned, you can trap it with a six friends guide, and that's with a uh, presume with a trapping balloon, like a, a specialized balloon, I presume, right? Or any balloon can be used for trapping in a six friends. Yeah, you can use you can use any balloon in a, with six French with this uh, with this uh, recross because the profile is the same than uh, an answer uh, a Rix. so you can use in this situation also with one point five or two zero balloon you can you can trap and also okay. with the dedicated of course uh, trapping device. Wonderful, because because is the is the shaft is the section of the micro catheter is oval. Is on oval section that this is the the great advantage on respect of the other dual lumen, which is for that that you can trap with six French. Perfect. So again, that is the question. I think makes it uh, very easy to use, as you said. Another question that came is regarding the wire that you use, and I noticed that both of you, both you and Elliot, used uh, stiffer wires through the second port. Just any, and obviously that's a very um, difficult topic to have a universal answer. But uh, any thoughts, Elliot, from yourself, and then maybe Roberto, what are the wires you use? Number one, if you're doing the parallel wiring, which I like Roberto's definition, if you're in the occlusion, that's more parallel wiring if you're past the three entry. But just curious, in those two scenarios, which are the common wires you would use on the side port to enter or do the parallel wiring? So, Elliot? Certainly, having come from the uh, ADR perspective, having, you know, like you used uh, Stingray for a long time, then I've gone down the route of having a stiffer rail once I'm in position down the main port, which may be uh, the working wire that you use down the white port or, or even a Miracle 12 for you know, deliverability as a rail. And then exactly the same using a stiff wire if I know where the re-entry point is. So either a Confianza Pro 12, a Hornet 14. Uh, I do seem to find a lot of joy with a Gaia 3rd because you, it's steerable once you get out. And I don't know whether you do that with Stingray as well. So stiffer wire through the second port. I think you're right. Once you're intraplaque redirection, for shorter occlusions, um, and you're in the body, and that's a sort of reimagined parallel wire, if you like, then, you know, it's user's choice. And are you a Gaia 2? Are you going to use, you know, you need a steerable uh, intraplaque type of wire for those sorts of cases, which will be much more uh, user choice. Wonderful. Roberto, how about you? I noticed you use some Judo, some Hornet, some Confiandra. Any, any thoughts for, for our audience? Yeah, Mano, so uh, I think that uh, I changed uh, a lot in the last uh, period. You know, that uh, uh, I started at the beginning with the Gaia second. Uh, and now I, uh, I don't use any. I, I think that my, my first wire when I have to puncture is Gaia third because uh, I think that Gaia second is too weak. You know, that the, the new, new generation is of Gaia next, uh, the Gaia two. Will have uh, 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 will be stiffer than Gaia third we have now. So what uh, the, what's what's mean? We mean that we need uh, sometimes stiffer wire that, uh, it, that we can orient, but uh, uh, we need to, the the stiffness. So my when I start with Gaia third and uh, I need to have parallel wire, I, I go with the Onet fourteen or CP twelve, depending on situation. But because the second wire need to be stiffer. When I, you, you need to have a reentry, I agree with. Uh, with uh, Elliot and uh, I think with you that by Onet 14 
is a uh, is one that I like a lot for re-entry, but sometimes also Gaia third can be can be useful for that. Wonderful. And that, another question that came up, and that's actually very common for Stingray as well, is aren't we concerned for perforating the vessel because we're puncturing and we are not necessarily certain about the direction of the wire going? And what we typically say, of course, is that the wire alone won't give you perforation, but just your thoughts on this and from either of you. Um, have you ever had any perforation by pushing the wire through either port of the recross device? And for it, if I, I need to, to say that I, at the moment, I didn't have any kind of perforation, but I think that's the key point in this situation that you need to have, uh, you cannot push your micro catheter if you have, don't have a visualization of distality. I think that's, this is the, the concept that uh, you can, you can have a only 14 outside of the vessel and you have no problem, but if you push your recross, but also if you push your Corsair and uh, you know you don't know where you are going, this can be really a problem for the for the perforation. So uh, the, the the main concept that uh, always you need to have a, a visualization of distality and never push a microcatheter if you are not sure you are in inside the vessel. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise, this catheter doesn't break any of our pre-existing rules, which is that you know wire punctures. Uh, usually you'll get away with, but you shouldn't be exiting a vessel with a microcatheter. That'll make a big hole. And you saw beautifully from Roberto's uh, presentation there, you saw some knuckling examples. When there was anatomical ambiguity, he used a knuckle before then advancing uh, and then tried the re-entry at that point. Um, and that's an interesting issue in itself is, you know, creating a small enough dissection and whether this will work uh, in that setting. Excellent, excellent points. Another question that came is about use of the recross device for AFR, for the undergrade fenestration and re-entry. I mean, conceptually, it makes perfect sense. And for the audience who may be familiar with this technique, especially for undergrade AFR means balloon undergrade, inflate, deflate, and then you push undergrade wire. It's the equivalent of reverse card, but kind of in the undergrade modality. And theoretically, at least for me, the recross seems ideal because you're right there with two wires and so you can literally have the balloon deflate and then push the other wire on the side. Just curious if any one of you has used it or have any thoughts on the, on the use of this device for AFR. Stunned silence. So, Aberso, you, you tell me. No, yeah. yeah. Personally, I didn't, I didn't have any experience of the use of recross for AFR. Uh, I agree with you that potentially uh, we can have a, a, a good success, but uh, I think that AFR is a, a sort of bailout technique because uh, it's, an, it's a sort of an uncontrolled uh, attempt to re-entry. And uh, if you fail, you, you will have a sort of star, very distal re-entry the, with the um, polymeric wire in the, in the distal vessel. So uh, I think that's uh, when you... Uh, you, you are dealing with the situation when you fail with uh, with normal integrated dissection reentry, a control one. You can try to use this strategy, but uh, not as a first strategy for me. Yeah, I agree. I think AFR is when you're already in failure mode and you've got a hierarchy of precision of reentry there. Um, you know, and you're getting to the least precise mechanism of reentry when everything else has failed and it you know as a bailout and preparing for a um, uh, for you know, investment, investment back uh, yeah. rather than expecting to get it completed at that time, certainly in my hands. Perfect. And then last question, I know we're out of time almost, but people are asking about rotating the device. So let's say you're trying to re-enter or do the parallel wiring and the wire is not going exactly where you want it to go. Could you rotate the device a little bit one way or another to try to reposition the exit ports? I think that uh, in my experience, you can try to rotate, but I think that is much uh, uh, more useful. Try to go back and forth and try to change to change the position, uh, not not rotating, uh, maintaining the same level of position in the artery, because uh, I think that in that situation, you are not able to change something. But if you go back, you can try to rotate and push again. Sometimes you have some different position of your exit port. 
Yeah, I, I completely agree. It, intuitively, it felt like, oh, right, I've got a, a rotating opportunity now. And I, in that first case where I had quite a big space, in actual fact, the, the, the catheter never really orientated in any other way than it wanted to. Um, so, yeah, I agree. It's forward and back. Work out which direction you're coming out. But you can anchor within a space and come over the top and back round and down. Uh, that can be done. Um, but you just got to know, you've got to have an understanding of your landmarks, your anatomical landmarks, your retrograde visualization. Uh, but no, I, I haven't found that rotating it really helps me yet. That can be really helpful. What uh, Elliot explained about com decompressing hematoma, you can decompress with one exit port, with one lumen, and puncture with the other, the other lumen. So this is the advantage of having two over the wire lumen, the same device. Wonderful. So again, thank you so much. These are incredible tips and tricks for everyone starting to use this device. Again, I think we have much more to learn, but this is an extremely encouraging early experience showing a versatility of different uses. And um, you know, there's not a way for everyone to get familiar than actually to use the device. But again, thank you so much, uh, Roberto and Elliot, for excellent presentations. Would like thank to you. thank uh, IMDS for supporting this um, webinar. And again, thank you so much. Uh, and. Um, all the best luck to everyone for getting good success and low complications in CTOPCI. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye.